Wilhelm Maximilian Wundt is known as the father of experimental psychology. He has made a tremendous mark on the history of psychology. Wundt was born on August 16, 1832, and passed away on August 31, 1920, living to be 88 years old. He lived in Germany for most of his life, but was a great influence in America. He was a German physiologist and psychologist who not only left a great legacy, but also wrote many books and was truly a great individual. As a young man, he was brought up by his father, a Lutheran minister. He then went on to college to expand his interests. He attended the University of Heidelberg in 1856, receiving his medical degree. Two years later in 1858, he became an assistant to Hermann von Helmholtz. Wundt was also, was also attending the universities of Tübingen and Berlin. In his time with Helmholtz, Wundt wrote the contributions to the theory of sense perception. After working with Helmholtz, he focused on sensations, ideas, and feelings. He wrote the principles of physiological psychology. This book remains to this day one of the most influential in psychology. He is the founder of the first psychology laboratory at the University of Leipzig in 1879 and contributed so much to the development of psychology as a discipline. In 1881, he wrote Philosophical Studies, the first journal of psychology. Wundt looked at two kinds of experiences, immediate and mediate. Mediate was the memories of experiences, and he relied more on immediate, which was the psychological experience in its raw form. The laboratory was used primarily by German philosophers and psychology students, later branching to many American and British students. His degree was medical, so he started with physiology and studied how different stimuli cause different sensations. He was engrossed with the idea that the mind could be broken down and analyzed on a deeper level and still uphold the properties. He created voluntarism, the process of organizing the mind. The idea that Wundt is known for is known as experimental psychology, which studies the mind through experiments. He primarily focused on three areas of mental functioning, which include thoughts, images, and feelings. Simply Psychology reported that Wundt believed that experimental psychology was only part of understanding the mind's processes and that there must be other techniques and methods to help in the aid of development. He rarely relied on introspection because he believed that if one investigated their own sensations, they would be altered. Although introspection is not a fundamental method in today's work, it was a popular way of making observations during that time. While a professor from 1875 to 1917, Simply Psychology reported that he trained 186 graduate students, 116 in psychology. The most commonly known is Edward Titchener who later termed Wundt's theory as structuralism, analyzing the mind and structural elements. Enrollment in his courses doubled about every 15 years. The summer of 1912, there was a peak of 620 students, cited by Stanford Encyclopedia of Philosophy. Wilhelm Wundt is significant for many reasons, but there are a few that stand out. Simply Psychology reported that Wundt separated psychology from philosophy, analyzing the workings of the mind in a more structured way. He was a genius who brought, the, who brought to light a new perspective and helped others gain more knowledge. After working with Helmholtz, he focused on sensations, ideas, and feelings and wrote the principles of physiological psychology. This book remains to this day one of the most influential in psychology. In addition, he has done so much research and put in so much time in his 65 year long career. Recorded from the Stanford Encyclopedia of Philosophy, 
it is estimated that he has produced 53,000 pages of work relating back to psychology, physiology, history, philosophy, and so much more. His legacy will live forever. He was the very beginning of psychology, and because of him, we practice so many different fields now. All information was gathered from simplypsychology.org and the Stanford Encyclopedia of Philosophy.